ship leader. The human station is only answering our hails with an automated reply. I cannot get a living person to acknowledge our docking request. Ship leaders Edbit of the Create Freighter Collective Harvest hopped over to the communication station. We have the latest communication protocols, yes. Yes, ship leader. The station ports have accepted our request to dock and we can proceed, but I can't make living contact. What is it with these creatures? Are they cursed with ill fortune? Proceed with the scheduled docking and keep trying to hail them. Zedbit didn't want to spook his crew, but this situation was eerily similar to the last time he encountered a human. That time had ended badly. He still had nightmares. That poor medic. At least all the others were quick clean deaths. The massive bulk of the collective harvest, nearly a fifth of the volume of the station itself, slid gracefully to its assigned port. The station was a rather primitive design by current standards, a large central shaft at 90 degrees to three large concentric rings. It was designed to simulate gravity by rotation, but one of humanity's first technological acquisitions was artificial gravity. After retrofitting, the station found a new home and purpose as the first Terran interspecies trading hub. The collective harvest was to be its first guest. Ship leader to medical ward, Micklet. Log into the sensor feed of the human station. Is there anything wrong? We can't make contact with any of them. Logging in now, ship leader. After a few moments of analysis, there are no indications of anything dangerous to us. Atmosphere normal, biofilters are good, life support at full capacity. There's plenty of life over there. What is going on? Second, get up here. Bring two squads of security. We're going to check the station out. Armed this time. Over the comms, second in command Sekrep asked. This time, ship leader. Never mind, just get it done. We'll be up there in a moment. The sad fate of the golden glory and majesty's will was classified. So naturally, nearly everyone knew something of the tale. Zedbit knew that the Trixians had retrieved the glory. But after that, he had been of insufficient rank to know more. His last view of the majesty's will was from the window of his departing rescue pod. As far as he knew, it was still drifting through space. Whether there was a madman stalking its passages, or just his bones sailing the void, Zedbit probably would never know. Now he was faced with another human problem. He had hoped the peaceful life of a freighter ship leader would mean no more life-risking missions. He was too old for that now. Zedbit couldn't fault Cockett for his conservative response to their first encounter with a human. There was no way he could have known the danger they faced. But Zedbit knew now. If he had to face a human danger, he was going to do it at full strength, with weapons at the ready. Go ahead and initiate a hard dock. We'll go check this out. He ordered his pilot. With the barest hesitation, the pilot complied. Hard dock established, ship leader. Bay doors are ready to open. Keep them closed until I and the guards are down there. We'll open them ourselves. Without waiting for a response, he hopped off to his personal cabin to get his weapons. Ship leader Zedbit looked over the group assembled at the bay doors. His second, Sekrep, had brought six very nervous crewmen with him. Crewmen that had signed on to protect cargo from petty thieves, not skulk through the passages of an alien space station. Hazard pay rates didn't seem so lucrative now. I know you are not soldiers. I am not looking for heroics here. We will be going in two groups. Sekrep, take half with you. The others, you are with me. Our only purpose is to ascertain what we need to tell the humans. The moment we see an indication of what is going on, we are to meet back here. Stay together and watch your backs. If there is something wrong, humans will attack from behind. Don't give them that opportunity. 
Sakrip's antennae showed his surprise. Ship leader, how do you know that? I was stationed on the Majesty's will when it was lost to an insane human. Zedbit's antennae drooped at the memory. The guards' restless movements of their antennae and jumping legs showed their growing fear. Zedbit had to calm them quickly. That was a very different situation. The human then had been stolen, tortured, and starved into madness. This is a fully manned and supplied station, and the humans are not isolated from others. I am not looking to fight anything, but I also don't want any of you to be unable to protect yourselves. This is a courtesy investigation only. Observe, report, and leave with answers. He turned to the large bay doors and tabbed the controls. As they slid sideways, there was a puff of a breeze as the atmosphere equalized. Stepping first across the threshold, he ordered. Let's go. Weapons holstered, everyone, until there is no danger. Sakrip, keep the comms open. He was the first to step onto the human's bay. There was only one real way to build a docking bay. It was a large room with plenty of open space to organize goods for on or off loading. Freight handling mechanisms hung from the ceiling like Gercho web traps. There were a few large crates around. The lights were on and operational. It looked perfectly normal if you ignored the fact that there were no workers present at all. It should be bustling with activity and preparation for the transfer from the collective harvest. Sakrip, take your team and investigate the perimeter. We'll check over the interior. Sakrip headed off to do his ship leader's bidding, and his guards reluctantly followed. Zedbit's own squad pressed a little closer, once they were split up. He led them into the center of the large room and the crates that were there. They were perfectly ordinary supplies. Nothing was unsealed or looted. Very strange. Ship leader, we are at the dockmaster's control room. I think we found something. We are on our way. He turned to his group. Stay together and watch behind us. I think we are safe in here, but it is good to get into the practice now. His team drew so close that their walking legs were practically tangling as they moved towards the office. Diligently, they kept their heads moving to cover the few degrees that their eyes didn't see naturally. It wasn't easy to sneak up on a Creed, so the fact that the ship leader had seen fit to warn about it had them extra nervous. The author's name and the link to original text is in the description.